Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to build a fuel tank. For those of you who may not know, my name is Austin Ross. I've been a welder for 12, 14 years, depending on whether you count before school or not. But here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and the pipeline lifestyle. Here recently, I've been doing a lot of like mobile rig welding work and shop work. So if those are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. Today, I'm going to be turning all of this into this. Even though this is a very basic project, I always like to start off with a drawing. For this project specifically, this guy didn't need any, he just wanted a 100 gallon fuel tank, but I like to draw it and just make sure everything's the way the, the customer likes it. And so that's what I did here. I just, I used the clear lens, but as you can see here, I also use this apparatus here to draw the circles. I think I got this off Amazon. If you're interested, we'll put a link in the description, but uh, super handy to draw straight lines, but just a basic square. Got a drain, got this uh, four inch nipple that he's gonna use as a filler, two inch drain, and a two inch coupler for the where the pump is gonna mount. I'm also going to be putting a baffle in here, just so it does not, for those of you who do not know, a baffle is put in a lot of bigger fuel tanks to keep the fuel from sloshing around as bad. You know, if it's on a trailer, or even your truck. This piece here is the baffle, just cut. I had still water still cut all the corners off for me and break all these pieces for me. Broke two L pieces, this one here and that one I just showed you, and then two ends and then a baffle. I think I'm gonna start with welding this baffle in. That way I can put weld on each side of it. And then I think I'm going to cut the holes before I ever put the other L shape on. That way I can clean up the inside and keep the inside as clean as possible. Once I get the holes cut, clean the holes up, I will put it all together. They broke it for me to where it matches up corner to corner. That way you got a nice corner to weld in with my MIG. What welding machine do I use? I use a Millermatic 252, mostly just because that's what I knew about. I bought it right after I worked at that shop, right after high school. It's worked well for me all these years, so it's been super handy to do shop projects. Anyway, let's go ahead and lay this center line out and put our baffle in and get started here. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is skip weld it. I'm gonna put three inches here, three inches, three inches, and then on the other side of this baffle, I'm gonna weld three inches in here, and three inches in here, and same with that seam up there. Now I'm gonna take that other L-shaped piece, set it up here, I reckon, lay my holes out. It'll end up being one hole here, or, and then one right here, and then the drain over here. Yeah, that's the next step. So, we're gonna lay it out from the back side, just to make it easier to work on. So this will essentially just roll up like this, theory, yeah, I should have a hole here, and a hole here, and then a hole in one of my end caps for the drain. Alright, hold it right there. Now, I'm going to punch, punch those two spots, and use the circle burner. For those of you who don't know, it's what I've used in a couple of videos now. Let's see, a couple or one? No, yeah, a couple on the fence and on the lid that I built to cut these out with a torch. Had some requests on where to get these circle burners here on the last couple of videos where I used it. I got this one at Stillwater Steel. It's my local welding supply there in Stillwater, Oklahoma. I'm sure you can find them online. Mun out of Enid, Oklahoma might have them. Or there's also a real big welding supply in uh, Chickasha that most likely has them. Putting on close, I'll tell you what. Let's try it out. Oh, it's so hot. It's hot here in Oklahoma.
All right, coming right along, we got our filler hole put in here, the coupler where the pump's gonna go, we got the drain put in, and I got everything put together except for this one side. I got one more side to put in over here. Tell you what, my table is just the right height for this size of project, and my come along, I mean, it barely, if you noticed, barely picked it up and I was able to turn it over, but I'm thankful that I have something to move it around with, so that's working good. I was gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you these pieces that I've made. I don't really know how to describe it, except for, I don't know the, the exact lengths, but I just put one here and one. So you gotta do something like this number. That way I can clamp it either this way or this way. And I can also use a wedge or that tool, that, that spud looking tool, in case it's like the top that I tacked, it was sagging down and I was able to drive that in there to, to line it up. So line up pieces, I guess you'd call it. I'm gonna sand these off and then put that one last side on and then just time to weld it out. stretch now almost done welding it out I was going to talk about how to find the gallons in a fuel tank so what you do is you do like this is a 30 inch square so it's a real good example but whatever you have you know whether it's rectangle square don't matter well this is 30 inches by 30 by 30 so you do 30 times 30 times 30, which is what? What is that? I gotta look at a calculator. 30 times 30 equals times 30 equals. So that's 27,000. 27,000 divided by 231. 116 gallons divided by 231. That's how you find the gallons. Can y'all see that? Do not try that at home, boys. trouble getting all overhead dialed in. fittings put in, got everything sanded down, looking good. All I got left now is to put two of these D-rings, one on each side. I think I'm gonna hang them off the side like this, but on one on that side, one on this side. Put four tabs, I'm gonna use some two inch angle, two inch by 3 16 angle with a half inch hole, four of them, one on each corner here in case they wanna bolt it down. And this project will be good to go.
All right, there you have it. I like it, I'm pleased with it. Got his D-rings on there, bolt holes, his tabs, so in case he wants to bolt it down. He has got himself a 116 gallon fuel tank. So that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. My advice for this week is, anytime you're doing a project, think of something that you could have done different for the next time you do it to make it more efficient. For instance, whenever I cut these holes out, I had two of these three inch holes to cut. This one here and one for the drain, which is over yonder, right there. And next time, whenever I cut this hole, I'm gonna have that hole ready. So that way my circle burner is already set up for three inch and I'm gonna go ahead and cut both of them at the same time. Another thing I would have done different on this project is I would have rolled it up so I wouldn't have had to make that overhead well, just cause I can here or get my overhead more tuned in next time. So just little things like that will help you be a more efficient welder fabricator on custom projects if you're constantly learning and thinking of how to do things more efficiently. So that's my advice for this week. If y'all have any questions, let me know in the comments. We will see you next Friday. And remember, learn something every day.